I was lucky enough to check out the first exclusive IMAX showing of Matt Reeves' The Batman held on March 1st. It was a completely sold out show. And my crowd totally sucked because there was just a lot of silence for the entire film. And they only clapped when the film ended. And they also gave out some comic books. And although the cover uh, has the characters from the film, it's just an issue from the Long Halloween and it has nothing to do with the film. So it kind of sucks. Thank God I have the whole graphic novel because, you know, they kind of like, you know, grab you into the story and they're like, oh, if you want to see the rest, you got to buy the graphic novel or, you know, get the other issues. Anyway, I kept hearing about how this film is way better than the Nolan films. And it's not like I haven't heard this bullshit before. It was the same shit with Spider-Man Homecoming. And my personal opinion is that it is the worst Spider-Man film ever made. The sequel was enjoyable, and obviously the third film was the best Spider-Man film ever made. Thanks to the previous two um, iterations of the characters. So, was this film better than Nolan films? It's not. That's just my opinion. But it's up there on being a really great Batman film. And it's totally different than any other Batman film, which is a good thing. You don't want the same bullshit. And the thing is that this film was way too long. And there's one thing that I actually despise about this film that really pissed me the fuck off that I'll talk about in the spoiler section that has something to do with Robert Pattinson's version of the Batman. Now don't get me wrong, Robert did a great job in the film. Has he become one of my favorite Batmans? No. It's awesome on how when a bat signal uh, is on, the criminals fear that Batman is watching the shadows and might come after you, so they drop what they're doing and just run like hell. So that's pretty cool. The best Batman that scared the holy piss out of me was Ben Affleck's version of the Batman. And that's the way the Batman is intended to be. And that warehouse scene alone is the best Batman fight scene in any Batman film. And I love the way on how he disguises his voice with modulator. And look, Christian Bale is my favorite version of both Bruce Wayne and Batman. He is the only method actor to not only nail the, du the uh, dual personalities, but in this case, a three-dimensional character. You have Bruce Wayne prior to his parents being murdered. And then you have Bruce Wayne who's actually wearing a mask. And finally, his full transformation into Batman. See, Bruce Wayne the entire time was the mask and, you know, Batman was actually who he is. And when Christian Bale actually becomes Batman, I'm fully convinced that it's a whole different character in costume, which is vital to the character's identity. And the only other actor to nail dual personality and convincing not just the characters in the film, but the general audiences as well, is Christopher Reeve's version of Clark Kent and Superman. That's method acting at its finest. Zoe Kravitz did an amazing job as Selena Kyle and Catwoman. In fact, she's the only actress to actually pull off her character accurately from the comics. Look, I really loved Anne Hathaway, you know, as an actress, but uh, I wasn't feeling her character at all. And uh, Michelle Pfeiffer was actually amazing as Catwoman. But they kind of did their own thing with the character. And I loved Zoe's outfit, but the mask looks stupid as hell. And it didn't fit with the rest of her costume. So hopefully I'll use another mask for the future sequels. And Colin Farrell as the Penguin one's done right this time. Very much like his combo character. Andy Serkis didn't have much of a role as Alfred in this film. Which is kind of a downside because, you know, the relationship between Bruce Wayne and Alfred is, is very vital. Especially in, in key to the Batman story. And Paul Dano as the Riddler was creepy as hell. I gotta say it's the best version of the Riddler so far, but I was not a fan of his costume because it looked really fucking stupid. But it makes sense as to why he was disguised that way because he's trying to hide his identity. I was not a fan of Jeffrey Wright as Gordon. I think he was the worst version of Gordon. Well, probably not as bad as Pat Engel because I mean in the first Batman he was kind of serious but then he kind of turned into a joke. But um, yeah, I really just wasn't feeling it. And he's an amazing actor, but just not right for the role. I think they just cast him in a role for brownie points, or in this case, you know, um, to have <laughs> a lot of, um, as you say, it, uh, diversity in a sense. 
And John Turturro as Carmine Falcone was also a very big disappointment. I mean, I can never take him seriously as an actor unless he's doing comedy. And I mean, he did an okay job, but I think that Tom Wilkinson did a way better job from the Nolan films as intimidating, you know, as a mobster is supposed to be. And the film is heavily based on solving the Riddler's crimes and riddles. And look, he's a sick and fucking twisted serial killer. I will get more into his backstory in the spoiler section of this video. And uh, this isn't an origin story either. When the film starts, Batman has already been on his second year and he's very close with Gordon. And look, I would say The Long Halloween is definitely an inspiration for this film, but it's not 100% based on that storyline. I would say it's inspired by three different books, Batman Year One, The Long Halloween, and Batman Ego and Other Tales. Also, fans will have a major bone to pick with director Matt Reeves because he was so full of fucking shit about a recent statement he made. But I'm going to reveal as to what that is in the spoiler section of this video. So, overall, is this film worth checking out? Absolutely, especially if you're a Batman fan. And I can see as to why critics are praising this film because it's a very good Batman film. But completely different from any uh, previous iterations of the character in the films. And there's one thing that all Batman fans can agree with me on this one as to how they fucked up this version of Batman. But overall, Matt Reeves did a really good job with this film. And although I would have preferred to see uh, Ben Affleck's version of the Batman, you know, featuring Deathstroke and the inmates of uh, Arkham Asylum, this film was very well done. So here we go with the spoilers. So if you don't want to know, stop watching and then come back and watch again. Also, this spoiler section is only for fan supporters only, so if you want to find out as to what happens in the film, uh, join a fan support. So this is the last warning. I'm going to go into heavy spoilers right now, so if you don't want to know as to what's going on, please leave now and then come back later when you've seen the movie. Thanks, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot. Woohoo!